Hello everyone, this is Scarzig, and for today's video, we have a bit of a, I want to call it a January season retrospective. Now, I am going to be releasing gameplay along with this. I'll put uh, a link in the description and maybe an annotation or something to click on uh, for you to skip right to the gameplay if that's what you're here for. I did want to provide a little bit of context before that, however. Oops, uh, force of habit going to the ladder. Um, I wanted to provide some context um, because I was talking about in some of my other videos about how my deck has been slowly changing over time as I've climbed the ladder to, you know, cutting certain things and adding others to sort of keep up with the new environments and types of decks and players that you're running into. Um, in my earlier videos, I was running some, you know, pretty crazy stuff with uh, Frosthorn Rhino into um, Spirit of the Wild and that was like my big uh, coup de gras that I was abusing for a while and I had a lot of moderate success with it up until about probably rank 10 or so all the way you know from the bottom of the ladder all the way up to rank 10 eh, once you get into that neighborhood rank 15 rank 10 you can run just about anything as long as you're playing it well and uh, you, you know, don't make any really sloppy mistakes and you know your your opponent, like the general game plan of the faction that they're using, so you can play around their big bombs, you can do pretty well on the ladder. And once I got up to that point, you know, I was still pretty happy with the success that I was seeing with that uh, other basic deck. Um, let me see if I can, I think I have like an old remnant of it somewhere here I can show off. Yeah, it was something along these lines. Uh, with snow chasers, I was running Mark of Solitude with uh, to combo with the Jaxies and Rock Pulverizers. If you remember earlier on on the ladder, and um, again with the big combo Spirit of the Wild, Frosthorn Rhino, and uh, the Emerald Rejuvenators had slowly gotten swapped in over Voice of the Wind, and I had noticed as I was playing against these, you know, more streamlined, stronger decks, against smarter opponents, um, they were really able to, like, back off and kite me and wear me down, and uh, the Voice of the Wind really wasn't coming through for me, where if I was in a pinch, and Voice of the Wind is a great win-more card, you know, it's something that's going to help you press your advantage, whereas the Emerald Rejuvenator is something that you can play to pressure your opponent, but can also get you out of a bad situation. And that was also one of the reasons I was talking about how I had to cut Aspect of the Drake. It was a really big card I was using for a while to uh, just transform something small into a 4-4 with flying. It gives everything around that transformation spot flying so you can send all of your units over to finish off the enemy general for a really big coup de gras. And, you know, for a while that was a really fun combo I had in the deck too. I was able to, oh, am I going to hit you with this Frostworm Rhino? I'll use Aspect of the Drake to finish you off or give the Rhino flying and it, it was it was some, definitely some good times but you know over time as my opponents were getting smarter I was running into a lot more healing from uh, Abyssian and Lionar that those combos just like weren't coming through for me where my opponent was able to wear me down and pressure me out and a lot of my decks I was noticing even after I was swapping in a lot of healing and things like that, as soon as I lost my early advantage, that was it. My opponent was just basically able to starve me out. Um, so I, I tried to cut the deck even further, make it a bit deadlier, a bit more faster, uh, a bit more tempo based. And so I was experimenting with the headhunters again, even though I initially didn't like them. I, th I slapped something together where it was Headhunters, my basic core of removal spells for Vanar, and a lot of uh, just opening gambits. I was uh, kind of abusing this again. And down here at the bottom, I was running Jack's True Sight, which was a card I didn't really enjoy, is the thing. This is a very strong card, and it's very good for Vanar. Combos really well with uh, Razorback for a, uh, you know, a win condition for the deck. And, um, you know, it, it worked for a little bit, but again, I just felt like I was just, again, so reliant on, you know, keeping that tempo. There was nothing in there that could really bring me back into the game. 
where I wasn't really able to switch gears. Definitely, I will I will admit right off, it was most likely a piloting issue where I could have played the deck a bit better. If you do a little bit of research, you can see that Vanar decks of this nature actually do perform very well on the ladder. Uh, you know, I was running my old Snowpiercers again and Saberspine Tigers for reach and face damage, trying to close out those games. Um, I even picked up, started picking up the Twilight Sorcerer. I was ranting and raving about these guys for a while because they are very good. They're able to bring a clutch uh, Chromatic Cold or Hailstone Prison back into your hand. And this was a deck that, again, I was running for a little bit to see what I could do. I'm still hovering around that rank 7, rank 8. And even though I was uh, suffering a lot of defeats, you know, win 2, lose 3, win 3, lose 2, just hovering, still in that same area, I was able to, you know, get a better feel for the matchups that I was facing and see those patterns because you face, if you're facing Songhai at this point in the ladder, it's going to be, you know, it's not crazy keep away ranged burn Songhai. It's going to be Lantern Songhai. All of the Lion R decks that you're seeing are running Keeper of the Veil because it's so strong for them where as soon as they drop it on turn 5, it's going to bring back that Windblade Adept that you had just killed, or it's going to bring back that Silver Guard Knight that you had just finished off. Even though Vanar has the tools to deal with those cards straight off and continue to apply their pressure, that Keeper of the Veil was bringing Lionar back into the game, and, you know, being able to martyr to my units, and even though we would both be at like 7, 6 or 7 mana getting towards the late game with higher health pools, Vanar was just able again to, I mean Lionar, excuse me, was able to just starve me out for the most part. And that was just one of those things, even when I tried to force myself onto the opponent as hard as I could, you know, I'm still running into those same problems, uh, where Lionar doesn't care what kind of tempo you throw at them because they can just survive it. Once they stabilize and they're able to drop their big Holy Immolations and Iron Cliff Guardians, then they're just going to beat you to a pulp. Um, Songhai doesn't really care either because they're just going to burst you out of hand. They don't really care about the board as much as other factions. You run into a splash of Abyssian here and there on the ladder and they do a lot of the same thing as well where a lot of their damage comes out of hand and they are going to get their damage in. If you can't get that early pressure, and even if you do with Spectral Blade, Void Pulse, etc., you know, they're, they're going to hang on by a thread and then eventually outscale you. Um, and I was running into that so much, and I, again, most likely a piloting issue, but these lists that I was running, uh, this was, you know, the typical We Are Vanar deck that I was uh, running for a while, which was a hybrid of those middle two where I was kind of still lingering on the Frosthorn Rhino, threw in the Jack's True Sight, um, and then playing around with some of these uh, earlier drops, Snowpiercer, Saberspine Tigers. I was, I had like a really solid card pool, but I just wasn't really able to bring it together. And so I think that's where a lot of my problems were arising from. Just like missing that, that certain something, I think, to make all of this click. As I was messing around with Alquin Lord Masters towards lower on the ladder where I was starting to like really feel like I was losing a lot more than I was winning. I was like, huh, well if I'm losing these advantages, maybe I'll try and run, you know, Avalanche or something. And so I was actually abusing Avalanche and trying to make that work for a while. But your opponent, even if they're winning, still know to play around that card. And like at the towards towards this uh, division, you know, your opponents are a lot smarter, and, like, I've come to respect that, so I've learned a lot just by, you know, having to tweak my deck and figure out, you know, actually critically think about why am I not having the success that I want, and so, um, again, all of these lists that I've been sort of clicking through here in the background are still very viable, are all based on very successful lists, just, you know, sort of tweaked to fit my particular play style. Um, and so I am now running a completely different list. I was like, you know, I tried a little bit of my old stuff. I tried some newer stuff. I tried some straight plagiarize the meta Rocky Headhunter opening gambit stuff. And I was like, you know, let me just, let me just chill. 
I even streamed a couple times. You know, I'm just not going to worry about it. Got my butt kicked on stream. Uh, I'm sorry for anybody who had to catch that. I mean, I kept a positive attitude and I was still able to do my typical style of, uh, you know, commenting on the matches and giving tips and tricks where I could. But, uh, so, to skip right down to it, the deck that I am running now, I did put this together and I did test it for a couple days, making tweaks here and there to make it somewhat consistent before I show it off to you guys. And I actually went back to the old school Vesper build. Now, this, uh, the Vesper decks in general, because they play so much, the main combo of the deck is having a Glacial Elemental on the field, and then using Bone Chill Barrier. It does six AoE damage. You can tack a couple on, you know, with Snow Chasers if you have those. And you're able to really have that Crystal, um, the Crystal Cloakers synergize with that. But the Glacier Elemental was the whole linchpin of the deck. And just being able to pressure your opponent that way. And I found that after I did a little bit of research uh, regarding Vesper decks and building one, this is sort of what I was looking for. It finally clicked where instead of being that typical tempo style that I do really enjoy, don't get me wrong, and that Vanar is famous for, um, the Vesper deck is another Vanar subtype that you don't see as much, but I still think is pretty good. What I really like about it though is you're able to shift gears if you need to. It can hang on a lot longer towards later turns if the game happens to drag. If you get ahead, this deck is really good at keeping you ahead, just like your normal tempo, not as deadly. Like, there's not as much raw damage output coming out from this. But again, with, you know, Lionar, Songhai, and Abyssian, the way their current ladder decks are set up, they don't really particularly care. Um, so, with the Vesper deck you're able to just sort of grind it out if you need to. And so I'm running three Snow Chaser, three Bone Shield Barrier, this is key, these are all key to the deck. Um, Chromatic Cold, of course, Crystal Cloaker, uh, Hailstorm Prison. Now Frostfire is a point of contention for um, Vesper decks because it synergizes with actual Vesper minions. It gives you so much value if you're able to play it on a Crystal Cloaker or, um, you know, even a Snow Chaser make it into a 5-4, but um, you can swap these out for uh, Boundless Courage would work, that was something that I was running for a while there as you saw, and that would definitely work. I just like how the Frostfire, because it gives health, sort of functions like a heal, and even though Boundless Courage will make something immune to damage for one turn, that only works if you are already on the offensive. Frostfire allows you to not only use it offensively, but to just buff something out of kill range and get extra value out of it. So I'm only running two of those because they do clog your hand if you draw them uh, unluckily without really anything to specifically synergize with them. But two is a really good number. And again, if you don't like Frostfire, you can definitely cut that for something else. I am running three Healing Mystic and two Primus Fist. I would like to run three... Primus Fist if I could, um, but I did cut one for an Al Alsuin Lore Master because the ability to, again, steal a Killing Edge, steal a Holy Immolation, steal a Grasp of Agony, steal, um, if you're going in the Vanar Mirror, getting that extra Chromatic Cold available to use for yourself is, like, very, very good. Even, I've used it in dire situations to get myself a Sundrop Elixir and keep going, you know, it's just... That extra utility it provides is fantastic. And if you really did like the Primus Fist, because it does give its attack bonus to Bone Chill Barrier Walls, um, you could put in three of these and cut down to two Healing Mystics. But having three Healing Mystics is really good right now, just in case you want to top off your general, or heal one of your two three so it can survive an extra turn. Heal that Glacial Elemental if it gets pinged by something. So that's uh, really key. I am running Snow Piercers in this Vesper deck. Now, the other point of contention for a Vesper deck is between Snow Piercers and Cryogenesis. Now, Cryogenesis is a spell that deals 4 damage to a minion. Let me see if I can pull one up for you. Cryogenesis deals 4 damage to an enemy minion, and you draw a Vesper minion directly to your hand. So it swaps itself out one for one, 
and you get a Vesper minion. Now this is very good because sometimes Cryogenesis can pull you a Clutch Glacial Elemental for a combo if you really need it, or it might pull a Crystal Cloaker or a Snow Chaser. But because the only true Vespers we have in this deck are again just Snow Chasers, Cloakers, Glacial Elementals, and I am running Ancient Grove. The Cryogenesis isn't going to pull us anything that we specifically need because the Glacial Elemental, you're going to most likely leave it in your hand until you have something to combo with it anyway. So you don't really need to pull one per se because you're going to save whichever one that you do happen to pull. With three of them in the deck, of course, it becomes very consistent. <clears throat> Let me uh, get a little bit of water, goodness. I uh, didn't want this to go too long, but I did again want to go over how the decks that you're starting to run into will affect your own deck building. And sometimes you just have to cut and even cut some of your favorite cards and some of the combos that you really like and enjoy just to sort of, you know, hang up there and uh, climb the ladder. Because I at least want to get myself locked in at rank 5 so I can get the end of season rewards and maybe have a little bit of fun there. But uh, for this deck, I am running three Emerald Rejuvenators. Um, again, depending on the meta landscape, if you don't need so much healing, you could run Voice of the Wind for a Vesper deck. The cards, the uh, creatures that it spawns are Vespers. So um, if you have Glacial Elemental on the field, you summon Voice of the Wind and then you summon like a, a Snow Chaser or something. The Voice of the Wind essentially, because of its summon, will make the Glacial Elemental proc twice. And so that is pretty good, but again, that's sort of a only useful when you're ahead, win more sort of card. The Emerald Rejuvenator allows you to hang in there for longer games and to claw your way back from uh, a bad early game if your opponent happens to outpressure you. I only have two Razorbacks here. Um, if you only, for instance, have two Emerald Rejuvenators in your collection to put into the deck, or you only have one Twilight Sorcerer to put into the deck, um, I would definitely suggest one of those, any of those would be really good cuts to give you three Razorbacks. Uh, since I'm not running Jacks in this deck, having three Razorbacks isn't as important. And since I'm not running Voice of the Wind, Razorbacks aren't as important because that's less Swarm, less things overall to buff. But they do come in handy uh, to finish something off or to get that burst onto the general if all goes as planned and the Glacia Elemental has helped you maintain that board control and you're really pressuring down onto your opponent. The One of the keys of the Vesper deck is it's going to help you like get that momentum going and then slowly close the knot in on your opponent. I do have, again, two Twilight Sorcerers, very solid body, allows you to recycle Bone Chill Barriers for your combo board clear, and might even pull you a Chromatic Cold or a Hailstone Prison. Sometimes Frostfire. Um, and honestly, with this deck, most of the time, any of those options will get you out of a bind, where even if you pull a Bone Chill Barrier without the Glacial Elemental to combo with, you can backstep and then use it to wall yourself off and buy yourself a turn or two while you regroup to finish off your opponent. So that's very key. And coming all the way down to the bottom is of uh, Ancient Grove, this is the last point of contention for Vesper decks, where you can run either Ancient Grove or Jack's True Sight. Now, if you're running Jack's True Sight, you do want to try as best as you can to include three Razorbacks to uh, have that combo endgame. What the Ancient Grove brings, however, is the Provoke. Even if you can't land its um, opening gambit perfectly on like, you know, you want to land it on like two or three guys, um, the Ancient Grove coming out is still very good because it threatens that 7 damage. It's still a Provoke. It's going to lock your opponent down. When Ancient Grove itself dies, it still procs its effect on itself. It'll leave a 1-1 one, one Provoke behind. So it's sort of like a rebirth unit. Kind of leaves an egg. And any leftover uh, walls that happen to be scattered around the battlefield from the game going on as long as it has for you to summon Ancient Grove will also gain that effect. So, it does come in handy when a game becomes a later grind. Um, if you do want to drop this right on 7 mana, that's only advisable if you are already ahead, of course. This isn't something that's going to, um, again, not pull you from behind, but it can 
help you restabilize, which is very good. And since there's only one of them in the deck, you're just going to be constantly mulliganing it if you draw it early, so it's not too big a deal. Most likely you will get this once early, just swap it out, and then it'll come back to you late game to drop if you need to finish it off. So I've been having really good success with this Vesper deck, and this is what I'm going to be running for the rest of the season. It does take a little bit of getting used to, especially since I was running all this high tempo stuff before, but... Um, I've been having a lot of fun with it. It has a lot more a lot more guile to it, a lot more nuance, which is what originally drew me to Van R was their ability to play around with different things. And I uh, have a whole bunch of different combos and ways to go about defeating your opponent. And I think that this Vesper deck harkens back to that original style that I fell in love with. And as expansions are released, the, v the Vesper subtype is only going to get stronger. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of that in the future. And um, so I hope that I covered everything that I set out to cover. Um, but that, again, is the January season retrospective from me. And I'll put some uh, time skips in the uh, description so you can skip right to the Vesper deck explanation. And again, I'll have another link in there so you can skip right to the gameplay video that goes along with this one. So I will see you there, and you have a good one.